Alrighty, folks. Good morning. Happy Monday. It is October 18th, and um, I'm just going to hit y'all with a uh, with a pre-market prep video pretty early here today. So my good friend, Mr. Henry Gamble, offered to cover my options room session today. He knew I was doing some birthday celebrating this weekend, so uh, the rare opportunity here today to not have too much going on on a Monday, spend some time with family, so I'm going to take advantage of it. But I still want to hook y'all up with some preparation here, so... Let's get diving in. Futures, S&P 500 down about four tenths of a percent. Futures here for the QQQ, down about four tenths. Futures here for the Dow. Uh, come on now. Come on, think or swim. Futures here for the Dow, uh, down about a third. And then last but not least, futures for the small caps, down about six tenths of a percent. That's a sight for sore eyes here this morning. Um, so pretty much, I mean, we, we talked about this in yesterday's Sunday video. Uh, if you're looking to make an argument that the market bottomed out here and we're going to stabilize and start to head back towards previous all-time highs, there's certainly a few things that could support your argument. Um, there's also a few things that could support your argument if you think the market is just simply you know, kind of going to get rejected here at resistance after a short covering rally uh, and make its next leg to the downside. So... Certainly, you can make arguments for uh, for either perspective. What I'm looking to do here, especially with those of you in my mastery, we're already positioned short. So, taking a look here again at the small caps. Uh, we got our call credit spread here that expires in two weeks. So, it doesn't expire this Friday, but it will expire the following week. Uh, I think we're in great shape to get our 70-ish percent of max profit on a bit of a flush here to the 21. So, that's easier to manage. It's an out-the-money call credit spread. But then our other short, as we covered in the videos here, is the in-the-money call credit spread at 4300 So this trade is going to deliver a big paycheck if come November 5th, the SPX is trading under 4300 So under 4300 we got a big paycheck coming, which essentially means uh, you know, there's the opportunity for us to grab some, to grab some easy cash here so long as we're above 4300 uh, And here's what I mean by that. Take a look at... Yeah, we could look at today's expiration. Uh, today's expiration. Duh. We can look at Friday's expiration as an example. Uh, so like I said, you know, above or below 4300 rather. Market makes a move under 4300 We got some big profits coming our way. So we could, you know, to kind of protect ourselves here and start to uh, pay for some of the potential risk on that call credit spread is on, uh, you know, Friday expiration, weekly expiration, start selling some put credit spreads right above 4300 basically saying, hey, if we do flush under 4300 this week, then our call credit spread is really bringing home some cash. If we don't end up drifting below 4300 this week, we can take some premium off those puts there. So, now the premium's not going to be the biggest. All right, so, let's see. How's this look on two contracts? Now again, this doesn't look all that great, right? So uh, now take a look at some notes here. Say you're working off a fifty thousand dollar account. Just to use a number here, so for our call credit spread, we uh, we got filled at seven dollars and sixty five cents, and the spread is ten bucks wide. So max loss per contract is two hundred and thirty five dollars. So say you're taking a three percent risk, which is what we did here. Say for conversation's sake, you got a fifty thousand dollar account. You'd be taking six contracts. Uh, now, max loss on your six contracts is fourteen hundred. What's way more likely is if this trade doesn't work out and the market keeps going higher, we're probably going to look at like fifty percent of that max loss. So, fifty percent of the max loss there on six contracts is seven hundred dollars. So, essentially, the question is: over the next two to three to four weeks here, could you bring home seven dollars a profit to kind of pay for the risk on that trade? And I do think we could take home. You know, over the course of three or four trades here, that you know that seven hundred dollars or so of profits by selling out the money spreads down there near forty three hundred. So, you know, again, using that same account size, fifty thousand um, dollars. You know, say we're going to risk about six percent here. Uh, you know, you're risking twenty eight hundred to bring home one hundred and forty bucks. Now, if we can do a trade similar to this for the next you know four or so weeks here, it pretty much pays for all your risk on the call credit spread. Now, obviously, you know, you go to sell that put credit spread there. Market ends up dumping this week, plowing below 4300 Yeah, you're going to give a little bit of profit back uh, on your put credit spread there. 
but the way we structure this trade is, you know, we're, we're making way more under 4,300. So that's one thing I'm thinking here for our mastery. Now, ideally, we start to sell weekly, put credit spreads down near 4,300 um, on a little bit more of a dip here. Uh, I mean, we would quickly jump into that trade if we dipped to, say, the 21 EMA. So just something I'm taking into consideration here. Obviously, if you're not in the mastery, um, no, this doesn't so much apply to you, but for those of you in the mastery, a few things going through my noggin here this morning. Now, from another perspective, let's say, hey, this market stabilizes here. We dip to the 21, we hold up, and it ultimately looks like we're not going to dip lower here. You know, it looks like the path of least resistance is not going to be to the downside. Well, then at that point, we're looking to get busy back to the upside here. So let's do this together. I ran my scans this morning, got about 50 daily squeezes, and real quick here, I'm going to rifle through them, uh, see what looks like crap, see what looks good, and then we'll end up with a small list here. So allow me to push this back on this way. Um, all right, so let's see. It is 7.05 a.m. Eastern. This is how quick it should be when you're building your watch list if you're focusing on good setups. All right, so let me get to work here. CHD, no, Ulta, too extended, too extended. No stack DMAs, right? No stack DMAs, too extended. No stack DMAs, no stack DMAs, no stack DMAs. Uh, what's this? $31 stock. We don't want any of that crap. Uh, too extended. No stack DMAs, no stack DMAs. Yeah, so this is the key. You want to know exactly the kind of setup you're looking for. You should be able to make your decision in like a tenth of a second. All right, we're going through here. Nothing looking too appealing. <laughs> Everything that looks decent, uh, like AFRM. Uh, I mean, total beast here, just too extended. So I take it on a pullback. Um, XLNX too extended. Roku is kind of iffy. Too extended. Datadog, a little too extended. Um, good lord, y'all. Do we got anything setting up at the 21 EMA here? Ooh, what was that? FTNT. Uh, yep, that can make the list here. Let's see, HUM is too extended. GD too extended. Too extended. All right, pretty sad stuff here. Everything that looks decent. I would need a bit of a dip on to get long here. Airbnb, okay. That we can work with. That we can work with. AMD, too extended. Lowe's, too extended. T-Mobile looks like trash. Uh, McDonald's, solid. AT&T, garbage. AbV, Wells Fargo, not bad. Intel, choppy. Eli Lilly, choppy. Verizon, Home Depot, too extended. Well, there you have it. Um, so would that take two minutes? Just about two minutes. We're going through 50 daily squeezes there, and we're left with Match.com. You have a squeeze, you have a stack DMAs, but you're setting up at the buy zone. Wells Fargo got a daily squeeze, you got stack DMAs, you're setting up at the buy zone. Same goes for McDonald's, same goes for Airbnb, same goes for uh, FTNT. So there's some good structure, good momentum, good squeeze action at the 21 EMA. Uh, and then there's a long list of things I would buy on a pullback, uh, like Tesla. Give me a Tesla pullback as it gaps up seven bucks this morning. Um, you know, I take a dip on Netflix. I take a dip on AMD. I take a dip on UPST. I would take a dip on a firm. Uh, I would take a dip on Team. A lot of things I take a dip on. Uh, a few things again here at Match, Wells Fargo, McDonald's, Airbnb, FTNT. Uh, you know, these are the kinds of things I will focus on if towards the end of the week, towards next week. You know, it is looking more and more like, hey, this market's just not going to flush. Right? We're back above the 21. Bearish momentum is basically out the window. We're stabilizing here. We're getting through resistance. If that's a picture that gets painted, okay. Then at that point, I'm looking to start getting long. Plenty of things to buy in the pullback. A few things to buy at the 21 EMA here. But should be an interesting week. So, like I mentioned yesterday in the Sunday video, I love to hit you with a you know, super clear game plan of exactly what I'm looking for, exactly what I think is going to happen. To be honest, right now, 
I'm not going to be surprised if the market goes either way. So we're positioned short in the mastery. So I would say selfishly. We look for a move to the downside. But we're not going to marry any ideas here. So a few things to take into consideration. I do think you can, uh, if you are looking to get long, we could just continue to rally here. Uh, I think you get a dip. So if you're looking to get long, I think you're going to get a better entry here. Dip to the AEMA, a dip to the 21. But if we do get the dip, I think you can make a lot of decisions there at the mean. Do we hold? Do we flush through it? Shall be an interesting week, y'all. Uh, but again, for those of you in the mastery, if we do get a dip here today, um, you know, with the understanding that under 4,300, we got some solid, solid profits coming our way. Let's uh, let's sell some put premium on dips here, just in case we don't get under 4,300 essentially free money so to say unless we're getting below 4300 so if you're in a mastery uh, see how things open up here in a few hours even though i'm not going to be too too active today too too active uh, always keep an eye on things for us i was looking for the next trade but hopefully i've given you a few things to take into consideration uh, if you look at the futures here just to kind of quickly rehash key levels of interest uh, obviously resistance pretty clear 4475 uh you know 4480ish pick whatever number sounds good here 4475 4480 there's your key resistance um, and now key support is actually going to be here on your weekly chart at your 21 EMA so above resistance i think bulls are trying to take control here under weekly support at the 21 i think the floodgates get open daniel look out below in the interim, be patient, be disciplined, and as always, I appreciate y'all watching. I will be uh, I will be live Wednesday morning for pre-market prep, but going to spend a little bit of time with the family today, take advantage of uh, the rare opportunity to do that here early on a Monday, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. So, hope you find this helpful, enjoy your day, be disciplined, and I'll talk to you soon.